if you were trying to do Portswigger labs like I was a couple days ago, you might have noticed that that wasn't possible because the entire website for Portswigger was down. Now, it doesn't seem like, you know, there was anything like malicious happening here, but a lot of people were complaining that they couldn't do their free online courses, um, which, you know, uh, my response would be like, well, maybe you'll get a refund for those free courses. Uh, but while Portswigger was down, I went ahead and played around with Adafruit CircuitPython in order to create a deliberately vulnerable web application that basically exactly mirrors some of the really fun labs that are available on Portswigger. So if you like CircuitPython or if you happen to have a ESP32-S2 based device like an Adafruit Feather or, I don't know, a Wi-Fi Nugget, mm -hmm. uh, then you could go ahead and follow along with this as well. <clears throat> I went ahead and posted the code here. So all you really need to do is put CircuitPython on your board and then just drag and drop the damn vulnerable nug um, onto your CircuitPython board. And it will go ahead and set this up. Uh, the only thing you need to change is the Wi-Fi credentials in the secrets.py file. Once you put your own Wi-Fi wi credentials in there, it will join your Wi-Fi network. It will pick a random username and password. So it's not going to be the same every time. You'll have to figure it out using some tools. And um, I provided a 60-second solution on how to do this on the video. So um, pretending to break into the Cat Fanciers Association. Of course, to anybody who's in the Cat Fanciers Association, I would never do that. I would never do that. But you know, just for a simulation on a very spicy you know, account that lots of people would be wanting to break into, I figured this was a good example. So as you can see, um, I just used Burp Suite to, well, OK, I guess that's as big as this is going to get. Um, but I just used Burp Suite to very quickly cycle through a bunch of username guesses and then cycle through a bunch of password guesses in order to guess the username and guess the password by analyzing the responses. So if you want to learn a little bit about how this works and you have a CircuitPython device sitting around, then this could be a very cool way of uh, having a free and totally legal to attack a web application punching bag to try out some of these techniques. And honestly, coding this was really fun. It's easy to see how people will try to do something secure and just meet like very, very minimum expectations for it, and then end up introducing logic that's vulnerable to things like brute forcing. So a lot of fun to do. And hopefully, if you guys are interested in web application pen testing, then this is something that could be a resource for anyone who wants to have, instead of like a remote lab that could crash for hours on end, a CircuitPython uh, approximation of the same thing that allows you to test this in your own Home. It's also really cool that you can just like screw around with the web server that's running on CircuitPython too. So mm -hmm. you can like make modifications for I guess other labs that you were doing through Burp Suite before. Yeah. So like it's just Python <clears throat> too, so it's easy to read and yeah, follow so I'm, along with. I'm thinking about using the same kind of idea to do things um, for other labs that a port swigger hosts. Like um, I was doing uh, what was I showing you last night? Oh, cross-site scripting. Hmm. So if you wanted an example of like what a cross-site scripting attack would look like with poorly sanitized uh, code, you could actually look at the code that's vulnerable and understand like what would need it, what what would be needed uh, in order to prevent that sort of attack from happening. So yeah, I'm probably going to be doing more of these sorts of labs like in involving like cross-site scripting and some other things aside from just brute forcing. But uh, it was a lot of fun to do. So you can check it out if you're interested. And of course, if you want to just try this stuff uh, for free, you can always go to portswigger.net and check out the academy. Um, all you need to do is sign up for a free account, and then you're able to attack deliberately vulnerable applications for free um, however you want. And the cool thing is our friend Arsenis actually solved all of this um, using just a little Python script, which was, I was super impressed by. So I'll probably end up covering that in a upcoming Hack 5 episode if you guys are interested. OK, I think that's just about all the time we have for today. Alex, thank you very much for joining us today. And if you had a question that we didn't get around to answering, or if you think we missed a piece of news, make sure to leave it on the YouTube video, because we will go ahead and answer it on our live Q&A every Tuesday. Thank you also to Zam for the news, and to everybody who was with us live in the chat. It's great to have you with us, and we hope to see you on Tuesday. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye.